Greetings, brethren. Um, as you know, this is our first renewal in a physical sense. We have, however, been blessed through the Tapes of Truth ministry by hearing many of you speak numerous truths to us. I want to thank you for your labors in the Lord. I have learned many things about the real Jesus from many of you in here, even though I haven't met you until today, some of you. I want to present myself as a, a fruit of your labors. And thank you very much for that. Now for my testimony. For in a little while, the one who is coming will return and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. And if he turns back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. Now we do not belong to those who turn back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. This renewal theme is fitting for my testimony of the real Jesus. I no longer put my faith in man. This is why I use several Bible translations and I rely on the Holy Spirit to guide my understanding. There was a time when I thought I could not understand things on my own and was trained by man. And I'm not talking about men who uh, teach us the real truths about Jesus. I'm talking about false teachings. I feel like Paul must have felt. He thought he was right about his religion. He knew all the scriptures, but he didn't see that Jesus was who they were talking about. He only saw Jesus, see that this was about Jesus, until Jesus himself revealed it to him. This is brought out in Galatians 1, 11, and 12. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And Romans 15, 21 says, But as it is written, To whom he was not spoken of, they shall see. And they that have not heard shall understand. The reason I bring up this scripture is to tell you a little bit about my life concerning Jesus Christ and how he has revealed himself to me. When I was young, I did not have a Bible or go to church on a regular basis. I remember as a very, very small child that I did attend at a Mennonite church in Florida. I must have went several times because I won a Bible story book. I never read in the book or was it read to me. Satan uh, quickly snatched that away. I attended uh, vacation Bible school one summer in Georgia with my great aunt. And the longest stretch of time that I attended church was at a hard shell Baptist church in North Carolina where I decided to be saved. This consisted of coming forward at the altar call, which I did at the age of 10 in all sincerity. I remember my mother looking at me with a look of fright. Maybe she was embarrassed, I don't know. She never indicated that she was joyful or talked to me about the Lord. I don't remember any of the things that I was taught in any of these places, but I do remember having a love for Jesus and for God. I always remember praying, even though I was not taught to do this at home. As a matter of fact, I've never seen any of my earthly family pray except for my children. I had what most people would consider a bad childhood and clearly recall a dream that has comforted me throughout my life. It was at the age of 10 during some very trying times. I dreamed that Jesus had stretched out his hand to me and he was in the clouds and he was holding a lamb. And he reached out to me, and he said to me, everything is going to be okay. I only realized while preparing for this testimony that the t at the time I didn't even realize the significance of the Lamb or that he was in the heavens calling me upward. I did realize that Jesus cared for me and that he was very real. I woke up, and I wanted to be back in that place of peace. My faith was strengthened. Well, we soon moved back to Georgia, and I didn't attend church anymore, except for a few times at a local congregation. 
excuse me, it was at a country Baptist church when different ones from the neighborhood would pick me up. I don't remember learning anything from these sporadic visits except if you sin, you're dying and going to hell. And I remember thinking there must be something more to it than this, but I still didn't think of, about reading the Bible. And besides that, I didn't own a Bible. I thought that only preachers could understand. My grandmother used to sit and read the Bible, and all I remember her talking about was Revelation and trying to understand it. Still, I prayed to God and believed. I moved out on my own when I was 16 and got married when I was 17. At the age of 20, one of Jehovah's Witnesses knocked at my door. Thank you. They shared some scripture with me and a book that told of God's purpose for mankind and the earth. I was thankful to hear about these things and they had scripture to back it up. Soon a Bible study was started using the book that they had shown me in the Bible. They showed me many things in the Bible and lived a morally good life separate from God, from the world. I decided surely this is God's people. Even though I had a limited church attendance, I had lots of exposure to people who proclaimed to be Christians, and the Jehovah's Witnesses acted more like what I thought a Christian should act like and that any I had been in contact with. I wanted to be pleasing to God and learn more about Him, so I became one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I raised my children that way, and I went door to door talking to people about Jehovah's Kingdom. Oh, I learned plenty of scriptures. This convinced me even more that this was a true religion. I could not find anyone that knew the scriptures as well as Jehovah's Witnesses, preachers included. So I devoutly served the only way I knew how. I felt sorry for people that didn't want to hear what I had to say because I felt like they were rejecting God. I would pray for them like Jesus did from the cross. I thought that they were just rejecting God and, and that they just really didn't understand. People would say, you Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in Jesus. And I would say, oh yes we do. And I would proceed to talk about him. Well, it's not God's intention for anyone to be mistaken about Christ that wants to know about him. And one day, even the ones who don't want to know will know. It is his purpose to save everyone that truly believes Jesus is who he claims to be and who has faith in the Lord. With this in mind, God is continuing to save me. I'm not saved until the end, but I have full assurance that as long as I fight the fight of faith, I will be. Well, my story continues. I was married 17 years to an unbeliever. During the course of this time, he made the choice to defile the marriage bed, and we were divorced. About a year after that, I met Brother Tony. We were both scripturally divorced, and he had asked me for a date. I didn't want to date anyone, but I thought he was a nice enough guy, so I would go out with him once. I put some Jehovah's Witness literature on, on the end table at my home as a test when he came to pick me up. <laughs> when, he came into the living, when I came into the living room, he was reading it. I thought, hmm, maybe this is a man that is interested in God. Well, we had many conversations during the next 11 months concerning God and his son and our each individual beliefs, although we were both living in the world. This was finally a person that had scriptural knowledge that I could actually have a conversation with. The one problem, though, was we differed in our belief on Jesus. I thought I was surely right, and so I knew the Lord will guide your thinking if you were sincerely seeking him. So, I, and I believe Tony was, so I figured he would come around. After we were married, some events took place that made us both decide we needed to find a church to attend. Neither of us were attending anywhere at the time. Well, I wasn't interested in attending anywhere except where the Jehovah's Witnesses went. We tried that, but Tony kept telling me about the different things that were wrong. We visited others, and we both saw things that weren't right in them either. We became frustrated, and all the while, Tony was continually talking to me about the deity of Christ. I had been taught that Jesus was the Son of God, but not God. The example was explained like you have a son and he looks and acts like you, but he's not you. I didn't understand that Jesus was the visible expression of God, that God's word became life, that God himself came to earth and men didn't recognize him. 
I was also taught that Jesus was an angel, the archangel Michael, and that he was created. The scripture in John 1 that says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, is translated in the Jehovah's Witness Bible to say the Word is, was a God with a small letter. Uh, and then there's other footnotes and all to back up how they came up with that. But Brother Tony would get extremely upset and he would say, Jesus is not a little G. About this time, we got a computer. And Tony found a site about Jehovah's Witnesses that through scriptures served to change my view on their teachings. I was broken hearted. Could it be possible that maybe some of the things I had believed could have been wrong? Had I been blind and believed a delusion, as mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 2.11? And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. I decided I would not listen to anyone, what anyone had to say, but that I would read the Bible for myself and see what it had to say. I knew the scripture in Hebrews 11.6 that says, Without faith it is impossible to please God well and that he is the rewarder of the one that diligently seeks him. I definitely had the faith that the Lord would reveal the truth to me. And Brother Tony also reminded me of the scripture in 1 John 2.27 that says, We need no man to teach us, but the Spirit will teach us, and what he teaches is true and not a lie. Amen. And let's not forget John 15.26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So I started reading for myself. I decided to read without any preconceived ideas and prayed for answers to my question about Jesus. I started with the Greek scriptures since I was searching for an answer on who Jesus really is, even though I have since had the privilege of my eyes being open to see Jesus everywhere in the Bible. This was the first time that I had actually read the Bible from beginning to end. I prayed fervently that the Lord would reveal to me the truth about Jesus. In Matthew, I remember the scripture in Matthew 7, 7 that says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And I figured this was something that I could pray for and would be given to me. Amen. Let me tell you, brethren, he hasn't stopped revealing himself yet. I would constantly stop Brother Tony and tell him the things that the Spirit was teaching me. I went to the Lord in prayer, begging him to forgive me for my wrong thinking and wrong teaching to others. I felt as if I had been violated. I, I had spent the better part of 20 years thinking I had the right Jesus, and all along I had been preached another Jesus. I also did not understand about the Lord's table. The places that I had visited in my early childhood did not partake of the Lord's table that I knew of. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses do. The only day that they celebrate, they don't celebrate any holidays, is the memorial of Jesus' death. But in this, there's only certain ones allowed to partake, and they're the spirit-anointed ones, and we don't need to go into all that. But anyway, I felt like I was not worthy of this because these were people that would be able to be kings and priests, and I said, surely I'm not worthy. So I did not partake. Brother Tony talked to me about it, and I still could not do it. Uh, uh, I had thought of the scripture in 1 uh, Corinthians 11, 28 and 29 that talks about letting a man examine himself and not to, so that he, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily is not discerning the Lord's body, so I felt like I would be unworthy. Well, I continued to pray about this matter to the Lord knowing that he would reveal an answer to me. Then I read the scripture in John 6, 53 through 58, and my eyes were opened. It says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. So right there, if I didn't do it, I was not going to have eternal life, and I had no life in me then. And also, uh, John 6, 56 says that he dwelleth in me, and I in him. So Jesus couldn't dwell in me if I didn't partake. And Jesus is also talking about in this, not just remembering his death, but partaking in him. 
He was talking about nourishing our spiritual body with him, learning of him and the Father. Well, from that moment on, I have partaken of the Lord's Supper. We both decided that something had to be done. We needed fellowship with serious disciples of Christ, the real Christ. We started attending different churches, but we couldn't find anybody that was really serious about the Lord. The things they were interested in was business of the church, uh, what the different denominations believed. Nobody even wanted to talk about God. You went outside and they talked about everything but God. So Brother Tony got on the Internet searching for a prison ministry. We thought we would start our own ministry. While I was reading the Bible, learning new things, Tony was searching for us a ministry. We came across the Word of Truth Internet ministry through a link on a prison ministry. He read some of Brother Given's articles and told me to take a look. He said Brother Given was talking about edification. This was new thinking. Well, we read and then eventually started to request audio materials. We couldn't believe all the many truths we were learning. And many of these things had not been heard by either of us through our experience with the church. Most important was the focus of Jesus by this ministry, the real Jesus. After three years, we have decided, or shall I say the Lord decided, we should move to Joplin and attend the services in person. We have prayed for fellowship, and the Lord has been faithful to answer our prayer. We feel like the man who found the treasure in the field and went and sold everything so that he could buy the field. We also felt like the merchant that found the pearl of great price. I don't claim to be any denomination anymore, nor do I claim to be non-denominational. I am a member of the body of Christ. God is my Father, and I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus has made me a witness of him instead of one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This scripture is talking about witnesses of Jesus. And then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If we don't recognize Christ for who he is, we can't have access to the Father. In Christ, God was reconciling men back to himself. Christ is our mediator. He is the only way that we can be saved. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye shall believe on him whom he hath sent. It is Christ that I see everywhere in the scriptures. I would like to end my testimony with the following scripture, which I know many of you are familiar with, and it's especially dear to me. It's in Matthew 16, 13 through 17. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto him, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for, Christ, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven, and praise God, he's revealed this to me as well.